President Macri, thank you very much for talking to Bloomberg. First, um, congratulations, obviously, on your election win. As you know, Argentina has made a great deal of progress, but it still faces some big challenges. You had S&P putting you down in this list of the fragile five just yesterday. Perhaps you can say how you intend to move out of that category. Does it all come down to the deficit and inflation? Well, thank you, John. Uh, first, uh, I want to say that uh, as we talked before, yes. some months ago, that you were doubting about this, if these changes were forever and were permanent and came to stay. I want to say that 42% of the citizens of Argentina back our policies and demonstrated that that could mean 60% on the pessimist no, side. No, no, well, but <laughs> we're talking about elections in an in, 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 in actual world in which if you go around, nobody gets more than 20 or 25%. No? That means that, well, I told you that Argentines have learned from our mistakes and now we are really committed to grow, we're really committed to be part of the world, to be predictable, reliable, and, and, and create rule of law so as to develop the, the country through new private investments that will create jobs and reduce poverty, that is my first commitment, is happening, is really happening. And thanks to the support of the citizens, I've just called the principal leaders of the country. I'm talking about governors, members of the Congress, unions, businessmen, members of the justice, to say, we have to reach basic consensus in three categories. First, some laws that will commit at the different levels to tackle fiscal deficit in four years, tackle inflation to reach one digit inflation for 2019, to, and to reduce taxes at the same time, because we have created a crazy, uh, destructive, a taxing system that uh, discourage investments, private investments, uh, and we have to reduce those taxes at the national level, state level, and city level. Second level of reforms are related to create new jobs. So we are discussing with the unions, we have done conversations in the last week, and we are doing good progress to create rules that will create new jobs especially with all this technological revolution that we have to be open because this is something that we, we, you can't stop. No? And technology, the technology is coming and we, we want to be part of the, those new jobs. And the third is related to the republic and institutions. We have to enforce and strengthen our institutions and we are proposing reforms to the justice, to the political system and to the way that we administrate the state. We are talking about introducing technology, open government, access, public access to information, all the new tools that will help us to finish with corruption forever. No? Because we are really committed with that, because corruption destroys the moral, the moral of the country, destroys the efficient, efficiency of the country. So we are also committed on that. Let's begin with inflation then. I think next year you have a target of getting it down to 10%. I know that is the central bank's job, yes. but you play a big role in terms of negotiating with employers and with unions. And last year, I think it was around 24% was the pay rises that went through, or this year, 2017. What would be a target for next year in terms of the kind of pay increases that you would like to see going through? Well, as you know, we have an independent central bank. Yes. That, uh, runs the, the monetary policies and they have a target of uh, 10, um, uh, 12 minus, uh, minus or plus 2. We think that in annual basis we will be around 15% and we expect that will be a, a second or a third step because we are going from 40% to around 20, 23% and next year under 15%. So that would be your target in terms of wage increases for this no, no, 2018? No, lower because we are, that, that it can be a little bit lower than that. That will be our target, yes. So but below 15%? You, you know that each sector has free negotiations, no? 
on the, on the issue of the deficit, I mean, next year it looks like you need to borrow maybe 30 billion net, 50 billion dollars gross. You know, how much do you expect to come from domestic savers and how much from foreign? Domestic as much as possible, but if I have to bet, it will be 50-50. And in terms of really bringing down that deficit, does that really, in the end, mean a much slimmer public sector? Yes, yes. It will be a more efficient public sector because all the future growth uh, should create jobs in the private sector and we should freeze the jobs in the, in the public sector. No? So I, I think that this is the, one of the basic commitments that we are going to achieve with the governors. Just in terms of that more efficient private sector, you have this hugely promising agribusiness sector. And that is something that believes very strongly in free trade, it wants a lower peso. You have the old industrial sector, which is much more protectionist. Would you, you would like to clearly commit to promoting the first. Is that the, is that the core of what Macri's Argentina is about about building this new agribusiness Argentina. Well, what's core is that part of what I told you that we uh, understood, that we've learned, is that being isolated didn't bring any solution. We create more poverty. So we want to be part of the world. The, the millennials want to be part of the world. So mm. there is no discussion in terms of future. So what we need is some time to do the, for each sector to do their homework, investing, creating new, new agreements, productive agreements with the unions, so as to be ready to compete with the rest of the world. In the meantime, we are trying to do some progress in having new open and, uh, and free agreements with the different blocks of the world, you know, because Mercosur has been the most isolated bloc. And together with Brazil, we are trying to deepen our negotiations with the European Please. Union, with the Pacific Alliance, with Japan, with EFTA, because we need to open markets for our, our agribusiness production, that we, you, in which we are very efficient. Are you happy with Mercosur? I mean, I looked at Mercosur, it has like four or five trade deals with the rest of the world. Chile, by contrast, no, has gone off and formed 40. We are not happy at all. We have to give more dynamic to Mercosur, inside Mercosur, and with the rest of the blocs. That's why, why we had committed with Brazil, Uruguay and Paraguay to, to fasten the process. We need to create new agreements. As you mentioned, Chile, for example, the Chile, Chilean wine is a good wine, but with all respect, our wine is <laughs> much better. Is better yeah. <laughs> but uh, we have to pay taxes in every market that we have to enter. Chile has nearly, in every market, zero tax. That that's a, a big advantage. So we need to create those type of uh, advantage of tools to every sector in Argentina that is in conditions to pro produce more with quality and to export. Another big focus, obviously, of trade is your relationship with America. You have a relationship with Donald Trump that goes back 30 years. And to the outsiders, it looks as if you have been very kind, for, kind to him letting Argentine, let, letting American pork into Argentina. By contrast, it has been very hard for Argentina to get its biodiesel into America. Will that change? And is it a bad deal for Argentina at the moment? Well, uh, I think that we, we, should, we should try to find uh, if it is a bad deal or not after a, a longer while, no? because we just start negotiations. Mm. Now on the table we have two subjects, beef and biodiesel. I expect to solve beef quite soon and biodiesel is something that we ha should agree, the, the agreement should, came from, should come from the, the private sectors. Both sectors should sit down and find a way because uh, at the end the state still needs to import biodiesel. So it's a question of finding in which in which conditions uh, the, you will be, you, the private American private sector will accept to import, still continue importing biodiesel from Argentina, because the, the need is there. No, so we're not replacing local production. So I think that I still 
uh, with the help of secretary rose i still i'm still optimistic that uh, we will find a, a solution do you see donald trump as a free trader well donald is trying to find a way to protect uh, local jobs uh, in that point i may not have the same view that he has no because i don't think that the 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 challenges on the th or the threats are outside our in the case of the united states are inside is the technological revolution that is destroying traditional jobs and creating new jobs uh, so we have to be open and we have to be uh, enough intelligent to to uh, give new capabilities to our citizens to be ready to be part of the digit, digital area uh, era and the, and the aut automatization area no? the, in which is creating new jobs in different places. But for the sort of things you want to export, particularly the agribusiness ones, does America now look more protectionist than the European Union and China? Similar, similar, they're all similar. Uh, all free uh, Free traders, uh, at, at the end, when you sat down on the table, they start taking out cards saying, well, this no, this not. But well, we have to keep talking, keep negotiating, step by step, takes a lot of time. But what is clear, what is clear, when you analyze the last 20 to 30 years, which are the 20 countries that achieve more growth, reduce more the poverty at home are the ones that had trade more so it's clear that we have to go in that in that direction in terms of reforms at home could we just finish on that subject you had all these labor talks about how to reform the labor laws do you think that is now a process where you can see an answer there was talk in the last few days of a solution emerging in argentina yes yes i think that we are doing progress I think that there is a, a level of understanding that we need to sit down around the table, private sector, unions and government, and everybody has to put something so as to be ready and open to, to these new jobs. No? And we succeed very well, starting with Baca Muerta, that is the shale gas reserve, that had created thousands of jobs in, in only less than one year. Billions of dollars are coming to invest in Argentina, mainly from the state because you have the more skillful companies in all shale gas matters. And uh, we have succeeded in the automobile industry. We have been receiving new investment from Ford, GM, Volkswagen, Peugeot, Fiat. So the, the agreement worked. We, we succeeded in construction, in biotechnology, and in, in milk, but if, uh, in beef. So we are working with, with this type of uh, commitment. But, if I, was, yes. but if I was one of those foreign investors and I'm looking at the labor law at the moment, yes. what is going to make me happier in terms of the agreement you've reached with the unions? That we are reducing taxes and we are committed in reducing absenteeism and to get more intelligent and flexible rules to get advantage of the very skillful human resources that we have. Argentina, um, among all the natural resources that we have, gas, gas, mining, sites for developing tourism, added value services, and, and agribusiness, the most important thing in Argentina are the human resources, the entrepreneurial, skill that our people have. And those are the resources you want to set free. President Macri, thank you very much for talking thank to you. Bloomberg. Thank you, John, and let's keep in touch because Argentina will continue to be on the spot. Next year we are hosting G20. At the end of this year, in December, the WTO ministerial meeting. So we will have, we will be active in an important agenda, worldwide agenda. And we will follow you there. Thank you very much, President Thank Macri. You.